Mohammad Anik Zana is a pre PhD student in mechanical engineering department at University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. He's working under the supervision of Tamir Bashar in the area of multi-agent reinforcement learning. And in multi-agent reinforcement learning, he primarily works on mean field games, uh, which is a recent advance in game theory literature. In mean field games, the interaction between a generic agent and the average behavior of other agents, uh, that is the mean field, is considered. By computing certain structural properties of the, of the mean field, the multi-agent reinforcement learning problem becomes much easier to solve. His published works include multi-agent reinforcement learning over networks and multi-graphs, among the others. His research interests include real-world multi-agent reinforcement learning problems in industry like advertisement pricing, congestion control, and contagion over the networks. So with that, I'll let Ani take over and have the floor. Uh, thank you, Umar. Uh, thank you for um, uh, saying all those nice things. Uh, um, so yeah, so basically I, today I'm going to present our work on uh, reinforcement learning for linear quadratic mean field games and uh, in multiple populations. So, so I'll try to break it down as, as much as possible uh, since like if, if you're not from a, like a game background, uh, it, things might be a bit uh, uh, might be a bit technical for you. So but I'll try to break it down as, as much as possible, given the time. Uh, so Omar, we have one hour, I believe. Yes, one hour. OK, sure. And I think you guys can like uh, if you whenever you have questions, you can uh, interrupt uh, interrupt. OK, so so yeah, so this is joint work with my collaborator, Eric and and uh, Professor Bashar. And uh, as uh, Umar mentioned, I'm a PhD student with Professor Bashar at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. So, okay, so this is just an outline of the, of, of the presentation. Uh, so we start with motivating the, the work that we are presenting. Um, then we will present some background in uh, linear quadratic mean field game. So this is like a special kind of mean field game. <clears throat> Sorry, which has a linear quadratic uh, structure. Uh, then we'll move on to multi-population linear quadratic mean field game. So this is something that we have uh, kind of uh, coined uh, or started working. So, so we think it's an interesting uh, area. And uh, then I'll introduce something called the mean field equilibria, uh, which is uh, like the solution concept in, in a mean field game. Uh, and under certain uh, uh, conditions, we'll show that it, there is existence and uniqueness of this equilibria, and that also this uh, satisfies the epsilon mesh guarantee. So, so basically, uh, I'll introduce all these terms later on in the presentation. But what it means is the first line means that there is there exists, exists a unique mean field equilibria, and then also uh, also that uh, it is uh, approximately optimal. Or it's uh, it's uh, useful for for our case. Uh, then we will introduce a reinforcement learning algorithm to learn this equilibria, and, and then I'll present some uh, zero-order stochastic uh, optimization-based techniques uh, to do this uh, reinforcement learning uh, of this equilibria, and then we'll have finite sample guarantees of this algorithm. And then finally, we'll have a numerical analysis as well. So, okay, so the motivation for this, uh, for this work is basically uh, we have a... Uh, we, we are taking a look at the modern battlefield scenarios, uh, which require many heter heterogeneous uh, agents to learn uh, via interaction with the environment. So, so basically, there are many different kinds of agents which are uh, which are in the in a battlefield environment, and then they, they are trying to interact with each other and learn uh, through this interaction. Uh, the goal of this work is to enable a large number of heterogeneous uh, strategic agents to learn consensus or formation control behaviors in a, in a modern free manner. So basically, in, in this battlefield scenarios, the formation control is an interesting uh, or a useful uh, application. And uh, you have to learn it in a modern free manner, meaning that uh, you do not, so each agent does not have complete knowledge of its own uh, dynamics and cost functions. So basically, it, it doesn't have complete information. It wants to learn. Um, um, uh, using interaction with other agents. 
the contribution of this work is that uh, we develop a, a learning algorithm for mean field games based on uh, zero order stochastic optimization techniques. And, uh, and we demonstrate uh, that the multi agent reinforcement learning in large uh, populations can be effectively addressed within the framework of uh, mean field games. So basically, we are using mean field games to learn uh, equilibria, which are useful for multi agent uh, reinforcement learning. So, yeah, so let's, let's move on with the presentation. So this is just a literature review, and uh, I don't want to get bogged down by this, but just a, just a brief note. Uh, mean field games are started concurrently by two groups, uh, by Huang et al. And I believe mm, uh, in Canada, uh, in the University of Canada, and, and La Lyon in, in France. So the concurrently, they were started by two groups. Uh, then uh, linear quadratic mean field games were introduced for continuous time and discrete time a little later. Uh, then, then there were some work for RL for these mean field games for the stationary equilibria, non-stationary equilibria, and 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 and, uh, and then there are two different uh, threads of research. Uh, so the, the first thread of research, is, and I want to kind of uh, take a bit more time on this and kind of differentiate our work. Um, so so uh, the first thread of research is mean field games on networks where the agents travel on, on a network. So basically you can think of it as a large number of agents traveling on an underlying network like a, uh, like a, 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 like a road network in essence. And then the second thread of uh, research is network mean field games where the agents are coupled via network. So the, the, the network enters in through the coupling of the agents. So, so we, our work kind of lies in the second part of this, of this uh, research thread. So the first part, we don't, we don't work on that. Okay. So uh, the contribution of this work is we formulate this multi-population linear quadratic mean field game and where the agents are partitioned and heterogeneous um, populations. Uh, we uh, prove existence and uniqueness and a structure of the mean field equilibria, uh, which means that there is, a, there is a unique mean field equilibria under certain conditions. And then it has a, an affine structure. Uh, the mean field equilibrium has an affine structure, and I'll, I'll explain this uh, later on. So then after that, we will uh, prove epsilon Nash or approximately Nash guarantee for this equilibria. And what that means is that this mean field equilibria uh, will be useful in, in, an, uh, in a Nash game or in a finite population uh, game, this mean field equilibria will be useful. Uh, then I will uh, go, uh, then I'll prove uh, provably convergent RL algorithm for this mean field game. And, um, uh, and then, um, uh, then I'll have a, using st zero order stochastic optimization based techniques and a centralized simulator uh, for the aggregate behavior. So let's just, uh, let's first start with an N agent uh, game where each of the agent has uh, linear dynamics. Okay, so we have N agents in, in the game and uh, each agent has linear dynamics. So this is uh, kind of very similar to an LQR problem. Uh, but it's different in the in the way that it uh, it's a game. So I, I'll come to that later on. So so each agent has linear dynamics, meaning that the state of the agent and the control input of the agent enters in linearly into the dynamics, and then there is some uh, independent zero mean Gaussian noise. Uh, so that's the dynamics. Uh, each agent has a local information. So basically, it can only uh, uh, it only has access to its own state and action, uh, actions. It does not have access to uh, the states and actions of other agents. And uh, the agent has a coupled cost function. So, so this is a, an average cost function. And, uh, and I want you to look at the, these components of the cost function. So the first two components are regulation components and they are very similar to an LQR. Uh, function. So, so if, if we just had these components, this would just be a, a N uh, LQR problems, right? So the first component uh, means that you want the state of the agent to be small and basically don't want the state of the agent to blow up. And the second component means that you also do not want the control effort of the, of this, of the agent to blow up. So that we call these regulation components. 
Uh, and the second, the, the, the third component is, we call this a consensus component, and that's how we get a gain instead of a LQR or a linear quadratic regulation problem. And basically this is how the agents are coupled together. So, so let me break down this term. This is called a consensus term, and what it means is, uh, sorry, Umar, did you have a question? Yes, uh, I was gonna say, maybe you'll cover this already. Yeah. Um, could you just elaborate for the audience here? What is a consensus in a network? Or right, 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 right. So the, the way we we kind of define consensus is basically each agent wants to uh, be close as close as possible to the average state over over the uh, network or the game. So so this is just an uh, so this is just a summation over the states of all the. Uh, all the other agents, and then then we are just taking an average by dividing it by n minus one. So what it means is that each agent wants to align its state with the state with the average state state of all the other agents. So this is just the average state of all the other agents, and each agent wants to align itself with the average state. So uh, so this is how uh, so this is so now it's coupled, right? So so each agent uh, the cost function of each agent is affected by the states of other agents. And each agent is trying to minimize its own cost function greedily. So, so that's the game component where each agent is trying to minimize uh, the cost function greedily. And, uh, and, and that's why it's a bit different from a regulator or, or, or a optimal control problem. So moving on, uh, so still in an energy game, we, we assume that the pair A, B uh, is controllable and a square root of q is observable and these are pretty standard conditions uh, um, in linear quadratic uh, systems uh, and then matrices q and cz are assumed to be a positive semi-definite and cu is assumed to be positive definite so these two conditions are pretty standard and uh, and basically they they, ass they assure the well positiveness of the problem so now we define the epsilon Nash equilibrium and that epsilon Nash equilibrium in an N agent game is, is it's a joint control law. So basically an epsilon Nash equilibrium is a set of control laws, uh, one control law for each agent and such that uh, each agent can only um, gain epsilon uh, by changing, by deviating from this set of control laws, this set of prescribed uh, control laws, which we call epsilon Nash. So, so again, summarizing epsilon Nash equilibrium is a set of control laws so that if each agent wants to deviate from it, it can only get an epsilon benefit. Now, if you assume epsilon to be zero, that then it becomes a Nash equilibrium where uh, given this set of control laws, if each agent wants to deviate from this set of control laws, uh, there is no uh, benefit for that agent. So that if epsilon is zero, then this becomes a Nash equilibrium. Okay. Uh, let me move on. So in a mean field, so now, now we go to the mean field limit and in a mean field limit, what happens is we take the, the, the limiting case, the number of agents goes to infinity. And uh, you might ask, okay, how is that useful? Because there are not infinitely many agents. There's no infinitely many anything in the real world, right? But actually we'll, we'll show that this case, uh, because of this mean field limit, uh, computing the equilibrium becomes much easier, and also this equilibrium is epsilon Nash, or is, is, is approximately useful, or approximately optimal in a sense. So, so now we, we consider a genetic agent uh, in this game uh, with linear dynamics, just like before, and uh, where it has an independent zero, zero, zero mean Gaussian noise. The agent has local information, so it can only measure its own state and action um, control actions. Uh, now the agent is interacting with this mean field, so this mean field term is actually is the aggregate behavior of the agents. So let me just go back to, to this slide. So if you remember this, this average term, if you take this limit to infinity as n goes to infinity, this term will become the mean field term. So this, this, this is like the uh, limit of the, uh, of the average as n goes to infinity. And now the, the cost function is, is very simply we have uh, the regulation terms, just like before. And then we also have the consensus term where now the average term is represented by Z bar, right? So we, each agent wants to uh, achieve consensus with, uh, with infinitely many other agents. 
So uh, now I'll, uh, I'll um, introduce the definition of the Nash equilibrium. And uh, so this is uh, an analog to the Nash equilibrium. So in, in, a, in an N agent game, we look at Nash equilibrium, but in a mean field game, we look at mean field equilibrium. And, uh, but in this setting, we have a control and a trajectory pair. So we have a controller and a mean field trajectory pair. So phi is our controller and z bar is the mean field trajectory pair, which will represent the mean field equilibrium. And phi is the controller for any agent. So basically all agents, uh, if they follow phi, uh, that's the mean field equilibrium. Uh, so we, we define two operators uh, and I'll just kind of briefly summarize the idea of these op behind these two operators. Uh, the first one is uh, called consistency operator. And uh, consistency operator is basically when you are, uh, is a, a mean field Z bar is consistent with a controller uh, phi. So basically what it means is that if there are infinitely many agents following uh, controller phi, then the mean field of the average behavior generated by that is Z bar. So, so, so consistency of operator is you give it a controller and it outputs the mean field generated by that controller or we also call it a mean field uh, consistent with that control. Uh, the second operator is the optimality operator. It's kind of like an inverse of the consistency operator. Is given a mean field, given a mean field trajectory, given that you know that uh, how the inf infinitely many players uh, are behaving, what is the best controller for this, uh, for, for the genetic agent? So, so we have the argument of J, uh, which means that given a mean field z bar, it outputs the optimal controller for that mean field. And we call this the optimality operator. So now we can, uh, we can introduce the mean field equilibrium and the mean field equilibrium is a, is a tuple or a pair of phi star and z bar star. Uh, phi star is the optimal uh, or the equilibrium controller and z bar star is the equilibrium mean field. And uh, they have, there is this couple definition where phi star uh, is optimal for the mean field z bar star and z bar star is consistent with phi star. So uh, are there any questions? I was gonna ask um, an intuitive way of understanding the mean field equilibrium. Let's say um, taking the example of that heterogeneous team of things in a war zone, what would mm -hmm. MFE look like in that scenario? Oh yeah, I'm going to come to that. So, so right now everything is homogeneous. Yeah, so everything is homogeneous. We have uh, like uh, all the agents have this this kind of dynamics, which is uh, homogeneous dynamics, and all the agents have a uh, very similar structure in the you know, very similar structure in the cost function as well. Although I mean each agent has its own dynamics and cost function, but the structure is the same. So the, it's everything is homogeneous, but we'll move on to heterogeneous. I think that's the next part. So equilibrium so, then look like. Uh, an optimal position in which they have a specific distance against each other. Is that what so? So, uh, so I'll I'll move to. So I I understand what you're saying. Uh, I think it will become better, clearer the, in the next couple of slides. Okay. Okay. So so right now, equilibrium is is basically the mean field equilibrium is a pair. It's a pair of uh, controller. So this is the controller for any agent and uh, mean field trajectory. So mean field trajectory is, is you can, uh, it's like kind of like a, uh, it's like a, uh, it's like a cheat code in a way. You can actually predict before, uh, before the game has started, how the average will behave. And basically it, it comes down to the law of large number. Because we have infinitely many players, even though all the, each player is uh, stochastic or uh, it's, you cannot predict the trajectory of a given pair, but because there are infinitely many players, you can predict the aggregate behavior of that of the of the mass of players, in essence. Oh, thank you. Okay, so moving on. To, okay, so 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 sorry. One last uh, slide before I go to the heterogeneous case is that um, uh, the mean field game. So so the mean field game at n goes to infinity is, is an abstract game, right? It's a it doesn't really exist. But what, uh, so the first thing is the existence and uniqueness of the equilibrium can be guaranteed under standard assumption. And then secondly, the mean field equilibrium is also epsilon Nash. 
So what that means is basically that if you if you have if you solve the mean field equilibrium, if you let's say someone gives you the mean field equilibrium, and but you have an n agent game, let's say n is a hundred, hundred agent game, or even a ten agent game. Uh, what you do is you make all those agents follow this mean field equilibrium controller five star, right? And under this uh, under this uh, kind of a prescription for for each agent. What you get is you get an epsilon match equilibrium. So even though you solve for the infinite limit, it's actually pretty. It's a pretty good equilibrium even for the finite game. And uh, and basically this this term means that uh, the approximation uh, goes it gets better and better as the number of agents in the game increase. So if you have a if you have a ten agent game uh, uh, and you apply the mean field equilibrium, um, the game will be better if you actually increase the number of agents to twenty. And the approximation will get better and better. And actually, we have some empirical results in mean field game literature. And what, what they say is that even for agents, even for like a, a, a 50 agent or 100 agent game, which is not a lot, uh, the, the approximations are pretty good. They're like, you can get up to 99% of accuracy, uh, even for, a, for, for like a 50 agent or a 100 agent game. Now, of course, you can't do that for like a two-player game or a two-agent game. Uh, the, uh, the accuracy will be pretty bad for that. But uh, essentially, we are trying to solve for large population uh, games. So this is this is like a result which was proved uh, much earlier, and it, it's it kind of gives a motivation for uh, looking at uh, mean field games. Okay. So now now we go to the multi-population mean field games. And uh, now we have heterogeneity. So, so it, it, there are L populations, capital L populations in the game. And these populations are connected via a sparse, a sparse graph. So L populations connected via a sparse graph. Uh, and then there are um, uh, N, L, N sub L agents in each uh, population. So, uh, so there are L populations and each population has N sub L agents. And each agent n inside this inside population L is, has this dynamics where now the 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 structure of the of the dynamics is still linear, but a a b and matrices they depend on L or the the population there. So basically, inside each population, uh, the agents will be homogeneous. But if you take a look at the whole game, the agents will be heterogeneous because they are changing with the population. So each population has its own kind of agent. Um, and and then uh, of course there's an independent zero beam Gaussian uh, noise in the, in the, in the dynamics. Uh, so the L populations are connected via a sparse graph, and agent still has only local information, so it only has information about its own uh, actions and states. And uh, now the, the the cost function is a bit more complicated, but I will I will kind of refer back to the earlier work and. Uh, and says, okay, so the first term, so, so this is a cost function of each agent, uh, N inside population L. And the, the first two terms are again, regulation terms. So it's only uh, to do with the, the, with the agent itself. Uh, the third term is we call this intra-population consensus. And what it's trying to do is it's trying to achieve consensus with the agents in its own population. So basically, is trying to achieve uh, consensus with, with uh, so you can think of population as let's say cities, right? And the cities, let's say Chicago and uh, uh, Milwaukee and St. Louis, they reside on a certain network. The agent uh, living inside Chicago is trying to achieve consensus with all the agents inside Chicago. So this is this is what we call intra-population consensus. And then the, the last term is we call this inter-population consensus where the agent is also trying to solve the consensus problem or trying to achieve consensus with the neighboring, uh, with the neighboring, with the, with the agents from the neighboring population. So let's say if, if Chicago and uh, Milwaukee or the Chicago and St. Louis are, are, neighbor, are neighboring populations, then the agent in Chicago will try to form a consensus with the agent in the, in the neighboring population. But th th there's a difference here and there is this uh, kind of difference of opinion term, or you can also call it like a formation flying term. Or, 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 or. So basically this uh, kind of, it, um, it kind of gives you an, a freedom, freedom to, to define your uh, populations. Or basically if you want to have uh, a difference of opinion with agents in the other population, 
then then you can have this beta trend. So so there is consensus, and you can call this kind of like a consensus or a disensus even, which means that there might be some difference of opinion from agents in different populations. So so that's uh, that's the basic idea behind the heterogeneous or a multi-population uh, mean field game. Any questions regarding that? Okay, sounds good. So, uh, so now we just move on to epsilon Nash equilibrium. So, so uh, uh, each N agent uh, game has an epsilon Nash equilibrium, and we, this is just the extension of, of epsilon Nash equilibrium to a, uh, a multi-population uh, game where each agent has is, is kind of trying to individually minimize uh, its own cost function. It, it, it's very similar to the epsilon Nash equilibrium that I just showed. So uh, now we go on to the the multi-population mean field game, where the number of agents inside each population goes to infinity. So the number of populations is still finite and is still fixed, but the number of agents inside each population is going to infinity. And uh, so now we can consider a genetic agent um, inside each population L, and it has a linear and uncoupled dynamics uh, with, with independent Gaussian noise and uh, agent has local information. And now we just uh, replaced the aggregate terms with this mean field, z bar. So now we still have the regulation terms, the intra-population consensus, where the agent is trying to align itself with the, with the mean field uh, of its own population. And then the inter-population consensus, where the agent is trying to have, like, let's say, a difference of opinion with uh, with uh, other with mean fields of other uh, populations. An eager question here. Yeah. Yes. So when you say an agent has local information only, does that mean it only has information about the states of its own population, or can it still have information about some agents of the other population? No. So in a mean field game, we don't assume uh, access to uh, uh, information from other agents because there are infinitely many agents. So we assume all oh, local information by local, I mean, just the state has its own information. So it remembers what state states it was in, and then also uh, what control actions it took in the past. Yes, so so actually we, we, we assume throughout the past, so, so going from uh, like time zero up to time T, but actually we are able to show that actually uh, we only need access because of the Markov property of this of this game. We are we only need access to uh, the last state. So so the last state and action uh, that we achieved. Okay, thanks. Thank you for the question. So, okay, now we go back to the uh, similar idea of uh, mean field equilibrium for this, uh, for this uh, multi-population mean field game. And again, we I, I bring uh, about the, the two operators, the consistency operator and the optimality operator. So, so basically, uh, consistency operator is again, um, given a set of controllers, uh, each for genetic agent of, of each population, uh, what is the mean field that will be generated? Then, right. So basically, if, if all the agents were following some control uh, control law for a controller, uh, what is the aggregate behavior that will be generated uh, by the set of controllers? And we we we, we call this z bar again. Uh, now the bold basically uh, tells you that this is a, uh, a a joint mean field. So basically, there will be a mean field for each population. So it's joint mean field. And, uh, and then the op optimality operator is given a mean field, uh, given a joint mean field, given that you know how the average behavior is, is, is evolving, uh, what is the optimal uh, controller for, for that uh, mean field? So, so again, we have these two consistency and optimality operators. And then the tuple of, uh, is again, um, this kind of a coupled definition that five star, uh, um, the equilibrium controller, is optimal with respect to the mean field z bar star, and z bar star is is consistent with respect to uh, controller five star. So after we have uh, uh, introduced these two operators and the mean field equilibrium definition, uh, now this is the first result of our paper, uh, and I won't go into too much detail. But uh, what we say is that we have existence and uniqueness of the mean field equilibrium. So there exists a single 
in uh, mean field equilibrium uh, under some um, some very general conditions of controllability and observability, which are pretty standard. And something that I would like to point out is that so this is phi l star is the is the uh, equilibrium controller for the genetic agent in population, right? and and then z bar star is the uh, mean field. So the first thing. Uh, or two things I would like to uh, kind of uh, bring your attention to is that there's a linear structure in these two terms. So, so phi, the controller, is, 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 uh, is a linear function of the state of the agent itself, the mean field, the, or the joint mean field, and then there is this offset term. So, so the controller has this linear structure where it's linearly dependent on the state of the agent itself, the mean field, and there's also an offset, extra offset term. Similarly, the mean field itself has a linear or, or affine dynamics where the dynamics of the mean field uh, depend on the, uh, on the, uh, the last uh, mean field, z bar star p, and then there's also an offset term. So, so we basically we, we could find that there was a um, affine structure of this mean field uh, equilibrium, and because of this affine structure, we are able to uh, find a uh, RL algorithm. So, basically, uh, just to kind of um, give you an overview, uh, mean field equilibrium usually does not have this affine structure, and this affine structure is due to the linear and quadratic nature of the problem, and we, uh, that's what we found. Uh, in absence of this affine structure, actually, we may not even have we uh, like making this RL algorithm but actually might be difficult. Uh, so, so this uh, affine structure actually makes it easier for us to um, come up with an RL or a reinforcement learning algorithm. Okay, so uh, just an outline of proof. I'll just go over it, and uh, we can have a discussion if you guys want to uh, talk about it later. And uh, the existence you need first to prove the existence unique uniqueness and affineness of the mean field trajectory uh, using a probabilistic approach uh, that's inspired from uh, this work by Carmona. And the equilibrium controller uh, is basically a solution to a uh, linear quadratic tracking problem, which is uh, proved using a stochastic macro principle. And the implications of this, of this proposition is that uh, at equilibrium, the mean field has deterministic affine dynamics. So basically, if you go back and look at the mean field, the, this, the, the mean field is, has deterministic affine dynamics. And so it can be computed offline. And uh, the controller is causal and, uh, and is distributed and affine. So uh, the causal controller allows for this non-stationary, uh, or, or allows for this reinforcement learning in this non-stationary setting, which is a major contribution of this work. Okay. Uh, now, again, uh, now we go to the Epsilon Nash guarantee, which is another one of the big uh, major contributions of this work is that this uh, mean field equilibrium will also be Epsilon Nash, and Epsilon, by Epsilon Nash, I mean approximately Nash, and this approximation will get better and better as the number of agents n. Uh, of the of the energy that can goes to infinity. So basically, the, this is the whole thing. It says that uh, the, the mean field equilibrium is useful and it's approximately uh, optimal in a sense. Okay. Um, outline of proof. I think I'll just kind of forego this outline of proof for now. And just the application uh, implication of the theorem: uh, the mean field controllers are epsilon Nash for a finite population uh, game. And uh, the, the approximation of the epsilon uh, grows or, or, or grows with um, uh, order of one over uh, square root n. So basically, as n goes to infinity, uh, epsilon gets smaller and smaller, and we get closer and closer to the uh, Nash equilibrium. So uh, now we move to the RL part of the talk. Uh, I think I don't have a lot of time, so I'll try to kind of uh, go a bit fast. Um, so uh, the RL algorithms in literature uh, mostly deal with stationary equilibrium. And what that means is that uh, they assume that the, the aggregate behavior or the mean field is static, it's, it's not changing. Uh, and they mostly deal with the single population setting and, uh, and they're not truly model free. So what that means is that um, the model of the agent can be reconstructed under uh, the information structure that was you know. So, um, okay, for us, uh, the affine structure, so for, for us, we kind of relax all these three conditions. We have a non-stationary equilibria, multiple population, and we have a truly model-free uh, algorithm. 
so for us, the affine structure of the weak field equilibria inspires uh, a two-part RL algorithm. And if you remember, there were two components of the mean field equilibria. They were, they were the linear components and then there were the offset components. And we deal with them separately. So the first part of the algorithm deals with the linear components and the second part deals with the offset. And this is due to a special structure uh, in, the, in the costs of the, of, the, uh, of the game. And each agent is unaware of its dynamics and cost function. And it only has access to the controller cost. So, so basically, uh, in the past, what, uh, what pe uh, people have done in literature is they assume access to the cost and also the state and actions, uh, action sequences. So for us, we don't ex assume access to state and action sequences uh, because that makes us not truly uh, model free. And, uh, and uh, we uh, propose zero order stochastic optimization based RL, uh, which basically pro performs a gradient descent in a stochastic manner. So, so we are doing a gradient descent on, a, on, a, um, on, a, on an underlying cost function, but in a stochastic um, and uh, the way we do it is by using by computing the smoothed gradient uh, using uh, noisy estimates of the cost. And Anik, could you elaborate um, a couple more terminologies as well? For example, zero order stochastic optimization. Right. Right. So yeah, sorry. I think I'm bringing a lot of uh, uh, detail in, but, uh, but uh, yeah, thank you for for pointing it out. So so basically, zero order stochastic optimization is a, is an optimization technique. So stochastic optimization, you can think of it as, as, as some sort of gradient descent on some underlying cost function. And what we do is we want to achieve the local or, or even the global minimum. So uh, what people do is in, in a first order of uh, right, this stochastic optimization is they compute the uh, gradient at a particular point, and then they take a step in the direction of the gradient. Right. So by taking a step in the direction or actually away from the gradient is, is how you uh, do gradient descent. So, uh, so uh, I mean, if you think about cost as a, as a, as a, uh, as let's say a topology or, 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 or a terrain, you're, you, if you want to achieve the minima or get to the lowest point, you, you just follow the gradient, right? You, or if you follow the, the, the steepest descent. Uh, so in first order techniques, what they do is they compute uh, explicitly compute the gradient. But in zero order techniques, we don't explicitly compute the gradient, we compute a smooth gradient by, uh, by basically taking uh, a perturbations around the point and computing the cost at those points. So, so I, I'll go into more detail uh, later on in the talk. And uh, let's me, let me just kind of go over the details fast because I think I don't have a lot, a lot of time. So, Right, so, okay, so uh, because we have affine mean fields, we, uh, our mean field equilibrium is affine, we only consider uh, mean fields of this affine form. And uh, we also consider some noise due to imperfect uh, simulation. And uh, under that, what we do is we, for each agent L, we uh, extend the state of the agent by adding the mean field uh, with the state. And what we get is we get a drifted LQR problem for each agent. So basically the dynamics or the extended dynamics of the agent can be written in a, in a linear uh, or affine form where the uh, dynamics are now, uh, they have linear terms and there's also an offset term. So it's an affine dynamics. And uh, the cost is uh, very similar to an LQR co cost, but with a drift term. So, so there's, a, uh, there's a drift term in the cost as well. So, so basically to come up with a, uh, optimal controller, we have to solve this uh, drifted LQR uh, problem. Right, so, uh, so uh, and we know that the, the set of affine controller, uh, the, uh, the, the optimal controller resides in the set of affine controllers. So we only uh, uh, look at this set of affine controllers. And uh, the cost under affine controller is, is a bit large. But if we somehow can set the control offset and dynamics to zero, we get like a very standard cost function. So, um, so, so what that gives us uh, in, in, in summary is that the linear and offset terms can be learned in a decoupled manner and independently. And uh, this is due to some, uh, some smoothness and richness properties of the, of the cost underlying cost function. 
so, so again, the RL algorithm is, is divided into two parts. The first part, we learned the, learned the linear terms, both of the controller and the mean field. And then the second part, we, we estimate the offset terms of the controller and the mean field. Uh, all right, and in, in both these parts, and the agent uses the zero order stochastic optimization to estimate the control parameters. And uh, so the control parameters are estimated using the ZSO technique and the mean field parameters are estimated using a centralized simulator. So we assume access to some simulator, which can simulate some noisy estimate of the, of the aggregate behavior or the mean field. And, and in the first part, what we do is we set the mean field offset and the controller offset to zero. Actually, by setting the controller offset to zero, the mean field offset is automatically zero. And at, because of this, uh, we can learn the linear terms. And in the second part, we just change the controller offset and the mean field offset changes, and then we learn the offset uh, terms. Uh, so, so just uh, a couple of points with, about the centralized uh, simulator. Uh, it simulates the behavior of a single agent in each population. Now, it's, assume, it's, it's supposed to learn the behavior of multiple agents or infinitely many agents, uh, actually, in, uh, ideally. But we assume that it only has access to a single agent, so it will, uh, it will uh, generate a noisy estimate of the mean field. And, uh, and, and under linear controller, if the controller offset is zero, the, uh, the resulting mean field will have linear dynamics. So there is no offset term in the dynamics because we set the controller offset to zero. Uh, and, but if your controller offset is non-zero, then the mean field will be affine. Basically, there will be an offset term. Uh, so this is the algorithm. And uh, the first part estimates the linear terms. And in, in the first part, and inside this first part, uh, we uh, we update the linear controller. So we update the linear part of the controller using uh, zero order stochastic optimization, and and then the simulator updates the linear part of the mean field uh, by by uh, simulating a single agent. The second part is uh, we estimate the offset terms. And again, it's very similar in the in the first part of this uh, second part. Uh, now we have a we update the control offset of the uh, using zero or just optimization, and and then the simulator updates the offset part of the mean field. Uh, so this is a very short uh, kind of description of the zero uh, stochastic uh, zero order stochastic optimization algorithm, and uh, um, it's it's basically a stochastic gradient descent algorithm. So basically, it it computes the gradient. Um, and then it takes an, uh, takes a stepping direction of the gradient. And uh, the, the uh, gradient is computed using a zero order technique. So basically, uh, if you are at, at a state x and um, so you have a function f, so it's for any general function, and, and uh, you are in a state x, you generate some k perturbations with some norm. And uh, basically, by computing the value of those functions at those perturbations, and, and using this formula, you can come up with some noisy estimate of the, uh, of the gradient, and which we call the smooth gradient. And then we take a, a step in the direction of the uh, smooth gradient. And some bits of learning. Uh, okay, I think I'll, I'll forego this part. So this is a bit more uh, a description of the zero order stochastic op uh, optimization algorithm. I think we can. Uh, discuss it in detail if you, if any of you guys want after the presentation. Uh, so, okay, so this is the first uh, kind of lemma of the of the proof of convergence of RL. And what it says is that it gives us finite sample guarantees for the zero order stochastic optimization for the linear components. And, and, and it depends on some properties of the cost function. And it's a corollary of the of earlier results. Now, the next lemma is, is very similar. And there's also finite sample guarantees of the zero order stochastic optimization, but for the off offset terms. So the offset terms uh, require a certain different uh, analysis because the underlying cost is different and it has a different properties. So we provide uh, convergence to uh, arbitrary threshold. And finally, we have uh, finite, uh, okay, so this is just an outline of proof. I think I can forego that for later. And finally, we have the finite sample guarantees for the for the RL algorithm. And what it shows is that given that the, the number of iterations of the first and second parts are large enough, and then the, 
the, the, the convergence and uh, confidence bounds are set in a certain manner, we can uh, we can get close enough to the mean field equilibrium with high probability. And, uh, um, and the proof consists of two parts. The first part deals with the linear term, second part with the offset terms and relies on convergence of the first part. And, uh, and of course, we use the zero order stochastic optimization to, to bound the errors. And, uh, and the convergence, uh, we use a contraction property of the mean field update, which is uh, very crucial. Uh, and I, I, so I won't go into too much detail of this proof. So, okay, so uh, finally, we have uh, some numerical analysis of our algorithm. So, um, the, the x axis here uh, shows you the iterations uh, of, the, of the algorithm and the, the y axis, the error uh, in the main field, in the computer main field. So, as you can see, it, and, and we, we actually simulated for uh, three different, for, for, for two different populations, for two different settings and for three populations. So, the, in the first setting, we have a chain network uh, where three populations are connected via a chain. And in the second setting, we have a ring network. Where the, the, the three populations are basically fully connected. So each population is connected to the, the other population. And uh, what we we have a scalar state and action space. And um, and the plots show that in the first iteration, although uh, the error was large, uh, in the second iteration, it, uh, it is drastically reduced. So and um, so these are these are the iterations of the of the RN algorithm. But inside these iterations, there are multiple iterations of uh, zero order stochastic optimization. So we had to actually uh, choose a large number. I think it was like around a thousand iterations of the zero order stochastic optimization algorithm for each iteration of the, uh, of the RL algorithm. And because of those, we could get pretty good estimates of the, uh, of the, of the controller and the uh, mean field uh, linear and offset components. And because of that, we get pretty fast convergence in the first step. And then after that, we have a, a slow, steady uh, decline of the error. Okay, so, so these, uh, we just had some uh, numerical analysis for our, our algorithm. And uh, in conclusion, uh, we have addressed the multi-agent RL from a mean field game uh, perspective. Uh, the mean field game involves heterogeneous agents, uh, which are grouped into populations. And we first established uh, existence and uniqueness of the mean field equilibrium, and also gave us a certain affine structure of the mean field equilibrium. Uh, and, uh, and we also established that this mean field equilibrium is epsilon match. Uh, the affine structure inspired us a two part RL algorithm to estimate the mean field equilibrium in a model free manner. And uh, we used a zero order stochastic optimization technique uh, in this RL algorithm. Uh, we also provide finite sample convergence guarantees for this RL algorithm, and, um, and, and then we also provided some uh, new numerical analysis for this setting, for three populations. And uh, yeah, that's the end, I think. Yeah, so I referenced it from then. So uh, yeah, that's the end of the presentation. So yeah, if you, it's, I, I think I kind of glossed over a lot of technical details because uh, uh, yeah, I think I wanted to kind of emphasize the main uh, point of the of the uh, work. So uh, yeah, we can have even a, a more detailed discussion if you guys want. Uh, yeah, yeah. So any questions? Thanks, Ani. This was very interesting, especially for me and for people who don't have this background. Um, the real strength, and this was really that if you have theoretical guarantees that you can find a, an optimal controller and um, we can find the trajectory. We can compute it in the offline setting. So no matter how many agents we have, we have we can have some guarantee that uh, we have the right controller and the trajectory that uh, everything will follow. So again, I will, um, since if, if you can elaborate from the scenario that you gave, gave in the second slide, of a war zone scenario where there are multiple agents involved, what would it mean for them to have an optimal or the Nash equilibrium, epsilon Nash equilibrium? If they have epsilon Nash equilibrium, what does it mean for them? 
Right, right, right. So, uh, okay, that's a good question. And uh, the idea is that uh, I think the main idea was somehow to solve a consensus or a formation control behavior. So, uh, for you know, let's if you take a formation control, then if you have L populations, what that means is that each of these populations are trying to uh, achieve a certain formulation uh, of certain formation, right? So if, if these um, is L agent, there are L population that each population has a number of agents. And uh, in, in battlefield scenarios, you want the, the populations to have a certain uh, formation. Uh, you want them to achieve a formation control. Uh, under uh, this kind of uh, restrictive uh, information structure. So basically the, all the agents have access to their own state and they cannot actually see the other state. Uh, this is kind of, actually, I, I, be, I feel like it's even more restrictive than, than real, but what it gives us is that, uh, what mean field games give us is that the aggregate behavior or the mean field can be pre-computed. That's the, the most um, uh, surprising outcome of mean field games is that if the number of agents is large, we can compute a pretty a good estimate of the, of the mean field uh, or a pretty good estimate of the aggregate behavior offline. So even before the game starts, we can compute it. And um, given that everyone is following the, the, the mean field equilibrium. And um, so, so that, that's the, I think the biggest finding of, the, of this work. And uh, so once, once each agent is following this, uh, this uh, mean field equilibrium, they will achieve a formation. Or, or, or uh, if you want to look at it as a consensus problem or opinion dynamics problem, they will achieve consensus inside the population. And uh, they will also achieve like a, free, a, a, a kind of like a difference of opinion within population. So, so you can think of it as a, either as an opinion dynamics problem or a formation control problem. And in a formation control problem, they will achieve a formation uh, even with this very restrictive uh, uh, information structure so that they can only observe their own states and they cannot observe any, any other, anyone else. So I think that's, uh, and we, we have proved that we can also do it in a model free manner, although we also assume access to a decentralized simulator or the simulator which can talk to all these agents and communicate with them. Uh, so, so if that's the case, then, uh, then, then you can have uh, formation control uh, using this model free uh, manner. Yeah, I think that's the main idea. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, uh, Nandini, do you have any questions? Do you think any of this can be related to what the work you're trying to do? I don't know if you're working in reinforcement learning. No, um, actually, all of this is pretty new to me. I am um, in the uh, this is my second quarter. I'm doing it as a part-time student. So all of these are new and I haven't, I'm not quite sure how to use any of these. My research is more on um, right now um, on explainability. Um, so um, I may have to think about it. I'm so sorry. sorry. No, 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 that's fine. No. Just making you think. And yeah. that happens all the time. That's part of the PhD education that we go to numerous talks, which are no way related to us. Um, like I remember going even to talks from biology and chemistry department. So yeah. Oh wow. Okay. There can always be something, yeah. even as minor as uh, how do you break down a bigger problem to smaller things? Yeah. Or how do you? So even smaller things, if you can pick from other. Um, from a talk, that's a good enough thing. And, then, and if nothing, you just learn about how people are passionate about the work they're doing. So yeah, that's, even that, that's good enough. Yeah. May I ask a question? Yes, sure. please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and usually in RL algorithms, usually one issues uh, that many of these RL algorithms have uh, is the sample efficiency. It means that you need to uh, uh, use a lot of samples or data in order to train your agents to uh, uh, to be able to have uh, a reliable uh, agent. Uh, but uh, how, I, uh, I just want to know that how did you uh, deal with this uh, uh, issue in, in your... Uh, that's a, yeah, that, that's a actually a very good question. Thank you for asking. 
Yeah, the, the, uh, so sample, uh, so so we have a finite sample guarantee. So, uh, you, so basically we say that if you have this many number of iterations of the algorithm or, or this many samples of, of, a, of like a trajectory, then for sure uh, you will achieve a good enough um, uh, answer. And uh, actually I have not computed this sample efficiency. Uh, I think I think it should basically with, uh, the way I understand it, it what it means is, is that uh, it should be epsilon to something, right? Epsilon to the power of something. So basically if you have a very small epsilon, you want to get epsilon close to the right answer, then how many samples do you need? Now that, that's an interesting question. I have not computed that. Uh, per se, but uh, we, we do have finite sample guarantees. And uh, I think it would be an interesting idea to actually see what the sample complexity is uh, in this in this setting. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a okay. good question. Yeah, okay. I think we have, we have, yeah, I think we can using these finite sample guarantees, we can come up with sample efficiency, uh, the idea that you're mentioning. And so it's a, I think, yeah, it's, 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 all, it's all the rage right now in our to compute sample efficiency, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And do you have any uh, plan to uh, use the simulator for training your agents, or uh, uh, or you uh, you uh, looking for something else? Yes, actually, uh, it's, it's uh, thank you for the question. Also, very interesting. Uh, we currently, so right now, uh, I I submitted a paper which kind of uh, relaxes this simulator assumption. So the simulator assumption is, I think is a bit restrictive that how can you assume access to this simulator which already has, which knows the dynamics in essence, right? So, so you have access to this entry, uh, entity which knows the dynamics and the cost function, but you're trying to figure out the dynamics and cost function in the first place. So, so, this, um, so this is actually pretty standard in RL, uh, in, in, in RL for mean field games. And you need this because uh, it, the problem for us is a bit difficult. And the, the problem, the difficulty is basically, you don't only want to uh, know your own behavior, but also the behavior of others. So, right. because, uh, and be knowing this behavior of others, the way people do it is by assuming access to this uh, simulator. Uh, now, actually we, we submitted a paper to NeurIPS and uh, what we did is that under some conditions, um, we can actually use and also asymmetric case. So, so sorry, sorry, symmetric or a homogeneous setting, uh, meaning that the agents are all the same. Uh, there is no heterogeneity. You can actually use the sample path of the agent itself. You can use the behavior of the agent itself to estimate the main field, uh, which is an interesting idea. I yeah, we submitted a paper just now to Neurips, and I hope we get uh, it doesn't get uh, like shot down. But we have this idea, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I can send you the, the I can send you. A related paper which is already published and uh, we kind of built on top of that uh, um, so, so so if you feel if you like but yeah this is this assumption of having a simulator is a bit restrictive i do think yeah yeah okay thank you thank you umar thank you for inviting me and thank you guys for for attending the talk nandini and milan uh, and uh, it was uh, great talking to you guys thank you